Hey everybody. Today we're learning how to do analysis of variance or ANOVA using R. I'm going to be teaching this by looking at an example, specifically the chick weights data set, which is built in with R. And uh, as you can see from the help file or from the viewer, this includes 71 different observations of a bunch of different chicks. And we have the weight of, their, of the chick at a certain point, as well as the sort of feed they were given, soybean, linseed, horse bean, etc. And I'm interested in the question of whether the weight is uh, impacted or is related to the feed that's being used. And we're going to do that using an analysis of variance. As a quick reminder, ANOVA is used to test whether a quantitative variable and a categorical variable are independent of one another. And the way it does that is by considering the null hypothesis that the group means are the same across the board. So in the present context, that means that our null hypothesis is that the average weight for these chicks is going to be the same regardless of the feed in the larger population. What we have here, of course, is just sample data, and we'd like to know whether we have evidence for these two being dependent on one another in the larger population. Okay, so it's good practice whenever you're doing a statistical inference to start with a visualization. Um, so let's do that with a quantitative variable and versus a quanti versus a qualitative variable. That often means a box plot. That's a good sort of starting point. So I'm going to use ggplot. You'll notice that I've already loaded up tidyverse. Um, so ggplot on the chick weights data set. Notice I'm using chick weights WTS, not chick weight. There's two data sets built in here. This is the one I'm using. For my aesthetics, I will put the categorical variable feed on the x-axis and the quantitative variable weight on the y-axis. That's really an arbitrary decision on my, on my part. There's not any logical reason why it has to be like that. And I'll do a geom box plot. And um, I'm also going to do a geom jitter. Because it's a small data set, I'd like to be able to see the individual data points as well as just the summary data that GeoBoxPlot gives us. Um, and I'm also going to put a theme minimal on here. I think that's the only other thing that I will do for my, um, in terms of making this look nice. Oh, one thing I am going to do for my um, GeoBoxPlot is um, I'm going to re remove my outlier. And so I'm going to put outlier shape NA in here. The geom jitter is also going to plot the outliers. I don't want those to double plot. And I will zoom in on that. OK, so from this visualization, we can see a few things. First of all, just at a glance, it does look like these um, weights are different for some of the different values of the feed variable. Um, just for instance, looking at that first category, Cassane, I could be mispronouncing that. Probably I'm mispronouncing it. Um, there looks like the weights on average are higher. For comparison, horse bean seems to be much lower. On the other hand, there's substantial spread within most of these categories. And there's um, a reasonable question whether or not these um, weights just look different between the different categories through random variation, or whether that's, there's actually some real relationship between the variables. And this is the question that analysis of variance is going to get at. One good thing about having the visualization is that it lets us think, um, at least in general terms, about whether the assumptions of an analysis of variance are reasonable. In particular, we need an analysis of variance to um, have equal variances between the groups. So very roughly speaking, the widths of these boxes should be about the same. We also need the data to be normally distributed within each group. So these boxes should all be relatively symmetric. Now, ANOVA is robust against both of those two assumptions within reason. Um, so here we're just broadly speaking checking to make sure that they're kind of sort of OK. Incidentally, the third assumption of ANOVA, that the observations all have to be independent from one another, is not something you can check with a visualization or from within the data set. That has to do with study design and, uh, and steps beyond the data itself. OK, so now let's actually run the analysis of variance in R. The basic command that we're going to use is AOV, analysis of variance. And um, the format here is going to be um, 
the sort of functional notation. So we want to, or rather model notation. So we want to say the response variable, in this case, that'll be weight. And um, I'm going to specify the name of the data set first. So chick weights, dollar weight, tilde, in other words, is weight explained by, and then I'll put the explanatory variable, chick weights, dollar feed. And uh, if I just command enter on that, I get some very basic information out. It is part of a, an ANOVA table. In practice, we don't really end up looking at that. Rather, what we do is we end up saving it. And here I'll save it just as a model. Because the more informative output is going to come from getting the summary of that. So summary of model. And before I execute that, I'm just going to reorganize my windows a little bit so that you can see this a little bit better when I execute it. There we go. OK, so we got the same information as before and then some. Here we are seeing our ANOVA table. Maybe I'll make it even bigger so it prints out all on one line here. There we go. Um, so we have degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean sum of squares for both the um, between groups variance and the in groups variance. So they're, call it, they're attributing the between groups variance to the variable and the within groups variance to the residuals. Just standard terminology for that. In practice, what you're really going to care about is the p-value here, listed as pr for probability greater than f, probability that the test statistic f is greater than the one that was found um, in this sample just by random chance if the null hypothesis were true. So in this case, we have a very small p-value indicating that there is strong evidence against the null hypothesis. Remember that our null hypothesis is that the group means are all the same in the larger population. In other words, we have strong evidence that weight is not independent from feed um, against the null hypothesis that they are independent. Now, that's a very broad conclusion, just that the feed variable does give us some information about the weight variable at a statistical, um, in the statistical sense. Oftentimes, we're also interested in potentially which of the groups are different from which others and how big those differences might be. ANOVA in itself doesn't give us any information about that. If we want that sort of information, we need to run a post hoc test or after the fact test. The most um, basic there and uh, probably the most widely understood is the Tukey on a significant differences test. And we can run that in R. The command that we're going to use is Tukey HSD. And we just run that on the model. And before I execute that, I think I'm actually going to pull up the help file for that function. And we can just see what it is and what it wants. There we go. Compute Tukey on a significant differences. And so it's going to compute confidence intervals and um, run significance tests pairwise on the different groups. So um, again, in chick weights, we have these uh, three different, or rather six different kinds of feed. So we are going to compare casein to horse bean, horse bean to linseed, linseed to meat meal, all down the line. So we're going to get a lot of different pairwise tests. Now, when you do that many tests, the probability of getting at least one type 1 error or false positive tends to be pretty high. And so the Tukey on a significant differences test is going to account for that by requiring a much lower p-value before it allows things to be considered statistically significant. OK, let's actually run this test on the model. Again, I'll make some extra space here for my printout so we can actually see it. And I'm going to need even a little bit more. I want to be able to see each one of these comparisons in a single line. Hopefully, I can make that happen here. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. OK, so we are getting 95% confidence intervals for the difference between each of these types of feed in pairs. We're also getting a p, an adjusted p-value against a null hypothesis that, in fact, in the larger population, the quantitative variable is the same in each of the two groups listed. And you see all the different combinations here. So for instance, for these two types of feed, 
here at the top, Horse, Bean, and Kassane. Um, there is very strong evidence that the mean weight in these two different groups in the larger population is, in fact, different. We are um, also given a 95% confidence interval for that difference. So with 95% confidence, based on this test, the difference is between 94.4 and 232.34. Notice the, um, the way that it's written over here is telling you that they are doing the subtraction, horse being minus Cassane. So this is indicating that, uh, that Cassane is going to have the larger values on average in the population according to this which corresponds to what we see here in this plot, where the um, cassane is much bigger than the horse bean. Um, okay, by comparison, going down here, for instance, um, meat meal versus cassane, there is not si statistically significant evidence that there is a difference between those two groups in the larger population. So comparing cassane with meat meal, in this plot, the one is higher up than the other, but there's not strong evidence that that isn't just due to random chance. This very easily could have happened just by random chance from the selection from the sampling process. Um, one thing that I want to stress as we wrap up this video is that whenever you're doing an ANOVA using technology, whether it's R or anything else, the code is relatively simple. I mean, all I did was a couple lines of code here to get my ANOVA output. The real challenge when you're running ANOVA and the most important thing when you're trying to do it well is to get your process right so that your hypotheses are clear, so that you have a relevant visualization that's going to make your um, reader or the other person that you're trying to communicate with clear on what's going on. You want to make sure that you interpret your results in ordinary human language rather than just giving out this messy printout that's very easy to misinterpret for somebody that's not very statistically literate. And if appropriate, that you run a post hoc test to give you more specific conclusions, because the basic conclusion of an ANOVA is very broad.